All right, guys, something a bit different today. Summer will be here before we know it, and I'd like to have a new model ready to fly for the next flying season. The field I usually fly at is rapidly filling with sports equipment, so the larger models are getting a bit dodgy. The landing approach involves coming in between two trees and trying to stop rolling before you get to the fence along the edge of the football field. Really not all that safe. Easy, easy way to combat that is to build a smaller model. Well, it's a good excuse anyway. So here we go. This is a Avacraft Mini Frantic. Comes as a laser cut kit, which means you actually have to build it with glue and everything. The wing has a 39 inch span, which is near enough a metre, and these days uh, that would fit into the Park Flyer class. I've already fitted the linkages and tail surfaces, the next step is the power system. Now, these days the go to would be a brushless outrunner and a lipo. But, well, I've got a couple of electric planes this size, so we're going to be using an engine. In particular, an ASP21, also known as Maverick and SC, Super Custom. They all come from the same place, just with a different name machined on the side. I got mine from Just Engines here in the UK. You can get them from Hobby King too, and it's quite a bit cheaper. But, Just Engines are more than just a box shifter. If you contact them, they're normally more than happy to help you and give advice. Well worth the extra few quid. Okay, the manual. If you've been running glow engines for a while, most of it's pretty obvious. It's worth reading the running procedure. There's no surprises, but it makes for a good reminder. The prop table's quite handy. The 21 wants a 9x4 for running. So, we'll need to find one of them. Now for the fun bit. We have the block. Exhaust. Carburetor. And a couple of screws, gaskets, and an allen key. All typical stuff. Some people like to pop the back plate off a new engine to check for swarf. A lot of the cheap engines would have some metal floating around inside which would munch the engine as soon as you tried to start it. I've not come across any swarf in a new engine for quite a few years though, so I don't worry about it anymore. Right, let's do a dry assembly. I'm not going to fit the exhaust gasket yet as the pipe will be on and off a few times when we fit the engine to the model. Generally, once you squash a gasket between the crankcase and pipe, you shouldn't reuse it. The screws are flatheads with a spring washer, so again I won't be doing them up that tight, or the spring washer will scrape a layer of aluminium off the crankcase when we undo them. Looks like it fits pretty well. The machine surface meets up perfectly. I like it. The carb just pops in the front, but before we do that, let's have a closer look. Unlike some small engines, like the OSLA series, this one is a twin needle carb. Uh, should make for an easier time setting the idle mix. The OSLA engines come with an air bleed carb, which, while they're quite reliable, setting them up can be a little more fiddly. One odd thing, this carb has an idle speed adjust. Very useful on car engines, but on a plane you generally want to be able to close the carb fully by radio to stop the engine. All well and good, you just unscrew it far enough that the carb can close. But then the screw wobbles quite a bit. And I can't help thinking with the vibration with the engine running, it might just work its way out. I think I'll have to gum that up with a little bit of Loctite. Okay, let's pop it in. It's fitted with the usual pinch bolt, everything slides in, a little bit of pressure to make sure the o-ring is seated and tighten up the nut. Just like the exhaust, I've only done it up lightly as it will probably need to come off again. Like most engines, it doesn't come with a glow plug. I'm rather fond of the Model Technics range, so I found an F5 to go in. It's an absolutely bog standard medium plug, similar to the OS8, only cheaper. <laughs> glow plugs come with a copper washer for a gasket. So just like the exhaust gasket, we don't want to squash it yet. So I'll only put the plug in finger tight, just on the off chance it needs to come out, as unlikely as it is. Next we have some props. I found in my box a Grautner 9.5 and a Master 9.4. I tend to go for the Grautners for running in. They're quite heavy so have a bit of a stronger flywheel effect, which I reckon makes it a bit less likely to stall when the engine's still tight. But I'll pop the Master on for now as it's got the right pitch according to the instructions. We'll have to order a 9.4 Grautner. Well, we're getting there. Engine mount now, and time to think about the orientation. The common trainer position is upright, makes it easy to get to the engine and get it started, but has a bit of an issue with the exhaust being directly in line with the wing, and I really don't fancy the cleanup after that. The easy fix is to position the engine so the exhaust hangs under the fuselage. Can make it marginally harder to get the engine going, 
but once it's started it makes no difference whatsoever. The next consideration is to try and get the spray bar in the carb level with the centre line of the fuel tank. I normally don't worry about it too much, but if you can get it closer, all the better. So, here we have the engine mount position, which leads us to another little issue. This engine mount from Radioactive, I think, is a square back with holes in the corners. Great if you have a large firewall. On this one though, the holes come right up to the edge. Which, if we look inside, means taking out a large amount of the reinforcements. Not good. We'll have to add a round engine mount to the shopping list. I think Slek do some good ones. While we wait for the postman, let's fit a spinner over a Grautner prop. When you get the spinners, the cutouts are always way undersized, so you need to mark them up and trim them. If you put the leading edge of the prop into the stray edge of the spinner, you can easily see and mark where the trailing edge comes, then join up the mark with the top of the cutout with a little curve. Attack it with a Dremel, and there we go. Takes a bit of practice, some of my early attempts could have probably fitted two props per slot. Washer and prop can go on now, I've done them up fairly tight, they'll probably end up coming off again yet though, uh, and the nose cone can go on, but wait, it doesn't fit. The mouldings for the screws collide with the washer, but nothing the Dremel can't fix. Zip some plastic off the posts, and yep, there we go, pop the two screws in, perfect. <laughs> Looks a bit big on the front, I reckon I'll probably end up with a small spinner nut, but for running in the big spinner makes it easy to get an electric starter to spin up the engine. Right then, not sure how long we've been running, but I think we might as well continue with this, especially due to the magic of editing, as the postman has arrived. <laughs> so, in the goodie bag we have the Grautner 9.4, perfect, but I also got an APC 10.3 to try. I'm thinking it will probably work quite well for low speed flying. And there's the Slek engine mounts. You can quite clearly see the holes are quite a bit further inboard. Much better for this model, but with all things there's a problem. The Slek engine mount doesn't quite fit the engine. And the next size up, which I just happen to have, is miles too big. But then, the fix is simple. Carefully trim just over a millimetre off the inside faces. If the bearers are wide enough, you can get away with it. As a rule of thumb, you should be able to get the engine lugs entirely on the top face of the bearers without overhanging, otherwise there won't be enough meat left for the screws. Time to mark up the firewall. Since I've already covered this model, we need something we can mark with a pencil. So some masking tape will do the trick. A couple of bits to cover the front surface, and we can draw around the fuel tube hole so we can make sure it'll clear the engine mount. Here's the modified mount. You can see where I trimmed some plastic away. And with the engine in the lugs, they pretty much exactly fit on the bearers. Couldn't be better, really. I'm going to wrap a rubber band around the engine and mount to hold them together while we position it on the firewall. The model is zero set, so there's no down thrust or side thrust. And since the mount is also zero set, and the engine isn't in a cowl, we just need to centre it up and mark it. Nice and simple. We want it to be fairly high uh, to get the jet somewhere near the tank centre, but not too high as the strength in the fuselage is better at the bottom. And we want the exhaust to hang straight down the centre. And after some wiggling around, I think we have it. On this model, by eye is perfectly good enough. Now we can just draw around it, as much as we can get to anyway, making sure to make the position of the little recesses on the back of the mount nice and clear. It's slightly off centre, but good enough. I'll make the whole position off camera so I can get a straight view on them. All I did was position the mount and use a pencil to run around the inside of the holes. Then mark the centres. Couldn't be easier. The whole centres can now get marked with a centre punch. Not forgetting any balsa filler you may have forgotten. Whoops. <laughs> Never mind, it's still in the right place. And here we have it mounted with some screws. But of course, we have another little niggle. The blind nuts on the back are quite big, and even though the Slek mount is a much better fit than the radioactive one, there's still some overlap with the firewall reinforcements. But again, it's easy enough to fix. The wood gets marked around the nuts. Then, after some swift slicing with a sharp knife, we get some clearance. It's not ideal as we've weakened the structure a bit, but I think it's a good compromise. Don't need a masking tape anymore, so that can come off, and a set of screws can go in done up just so the blind nuts make contact with the back of the firewall. Then all the screws get done up so we keep a fairly even pressure so the blind nuts all go in nice and straight. And there we go, all nice and snug. When the mount comes off again I'll pop a few drops of thin sino around the nuts, it will soak into the wood and really bind it all together. 
Next step, the bearers need to be drilled for the engine screws. Mark the holes. On some mounts you can get quite a good mark just with the pointy end of a self-tapping screw. Whatever you do, do one side, mount the engine using the first holes, then mark up the other side. It will guarantee it all fits. I would show you the drilling process, but I don't think you really want to see my bench standing pillar drill that currently resides on my kitchen floor. <laughs> right, so engine screws in, exhaust on, and we can see what the alignment looks like. And well, it looks just fine to me. Nice. <laughs> and here we are at another point where I'm considering ending the video. But you see, I've already got the footage. And well, it seems a shame just to leave it. We still need to fit the fuel tank after all, and those screws do kind of get in the way, and we need to get the throttle into the fuselage. Well, maybe I'll cheat a little bit. I've swapped the long screws for some cap heads and washers, and lock tighted them into the blind nuts. The mount is now as close to permanent as it ever needs to be, the fuel tank is in, and the clear tube goes to the fuel pickup, and the blue tube is pressure. The balance point is way too far forward, maybe I should have gone for a smaller engine. Mm, maybe not. <laughs> It's getting late, so I think I'll just show you the throttle linkage I ended up with. I used some good old Sullivan Golden cable. Basically a good quality small Bowden cable. A plastic clevis on the carb. I normally use a metal one if the engine's enclosed, as the plastic ones can melt. But on this model, the plastic will be fine. The cable goes under the tank, around the bottom corner, and up the side. And it gives quite a smooth action. Cool. Last bit for tonight, need to refit the exhaust. The screws have spring washers on, which should stop them coming loose. But if the pipe has holes that are open-ended, I use a bit of Loctite. Just a little bit, with the excess wiped off. Going to use a gasket now too, as this will be the final install. Now, I say only use Loctite if the holes are open-ended, as with blind holes, like on the old MDS engines, the Loctite forms a seal around the screw while you're screwing it in, the screw compresses the trapped air, and will more often than not blow a small hole in the aluminium. Worst case, the screw won't hold the pipe on anymore, so be careful. Still need to fit the 9.4 prop and spinner, but the prop needs balancing first. Not tonight though. I've got to figure out where to put the three servos, a battery, radio, and a switch. That fuselage is going to fill up a bit quick, I think. Okay, thanks for watching. I know the aero videos aren't what a lot of you come here for, but the variety is spice of life and all that kind of stuff. I do wonder though, those who've made it to the end, would you like to see a full aircraft kit build? Not an ARTF, but a proper kit. Something to think about. So, yeah. Thanks for watching, please do hit that like button, and if you're not already, please subscribe. Bye guys!